Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Joe Lemansky. I'm a firefighter um, in EMT at the Clinton Fire Department, and I'm here uh, once again this year to go over our eight fire safety messages uh, as we head into winter and the holiday season uh, with the hopes of keeping everybody safe and healthy going forward. So as we move into the winter season, it's important for everybody to understand that there are really three common causes of residential house fires. Uh, those being smoking, cooking, and issues with home heating, <clears throat> all of which we're going to touch on during the presentation. So fire message number one pertains to smokers. If you smoke, it is extremely important for your safety and the safety of those who live with you to smoke outside. Avoiding ashes or any, any type of hot debris falling anywhere inside of the house and igniting a fire. If you choose to smoke inside, there are a couple of things that you can do uh, to keep things safe. Uh, number one being using deep, sturdy ashtrays. That way you don't have any issues with ashtrays that may tip over or ashes on the ground or on any type of flammable substance. When you finish smoking your cigarette, wet the ends of the cigarette butts. It can be an inconvenience, however, it will prevent completely any type of ignition if you make sure those cigarette butts are wet and cold before throwing them out. Never smoke in bed. Beds and, and bedding material uh, has cha have changed over time and they are highly flammable. Any ashes that fall into that bed could very easily ignite and that type of material in the bedding ignites very rapidly. So we want to avoid smoking in bed. And last but not least, if there is home oxygen used for medical purposes in the home, it is essential that we avoid smoking around that. Okay, shifting from smoking to home heating. Uh, we are moving into the winter months here in New England. It is extremely cold outside and heating costs have gone up significantly in the last year. So some people will be turning to space heaters for supplemental heat. <clears throat> One thing we want to make sure is that we give the space heater, if you are using it, significant space from anything you should be really three feet on all sides between the space heater and any other object, including walls. Okay, give those space heaters space. Um, it is preferable and recommended that those space heaters sit on a solid floor, whether that be hardwood or tile, something hard, and not on a carpeted floor. Plugging the space heaters in, we really want to stress this, they should not be plugged into extension cords and they should not be plugged into power strips, both of which are unable to handle the draw on electricity that a space heater calls for and can very easily overheat, causing a home house fire. So make sure those space heaters are on hard surfaces and plugged directly into a wall outlet. And last but not least, if you're using the space heater, Make sure that you are present when it's on, in the room. If you leave the room or leave the house, you should shut that space heater off. And it, it, also when you go to bed, make sure that space heater gets turned off. That way, you know, it, it's only being used when it is being watched. Uh, one last piece of advice, we've seen this uh, with the fire department going into people's homes. Uh, sometimes those, the top of those space heaters can be used almost as a an end table in living rooms and whatnot, we really want to make sure that there is nothing on top of those space heaters, whether it be magazines, newspapers, or whatnot. Even sometimes you'll see people put, the, put blankets on top briefly to warm them up prior to putting them on. We really need to stress no flammable material should be placed on top of the space heater as well. Okay, cooking. <coughs> One of the three most common causes of residential house fires. Most important thing to stress when discussing cooking in the home 
is to make sure you stay in the kitchen when you're cooking your food. Okay, it's supervised, you have an eye on it. If anything does start to catch fire, you'll be able to handle that situation quickly and immediately. So never leave that cooking unattended. Uh, wear tight fitting clothing or short sleeves. You know, avoid bathrobes or anything that may dangle down near <coughs> an open flame if you have gas or the electric range top if you have a, an electric stove. If a pan catches fire, we like to use the term, put a lid on it. If, if the grease in the pan catches fire and it's safe to do so without putting yourself at any risk, you should try to turn off the burner and slide a cover over that pan and then remove yourself, you know, a, at least a few feet back, make sure that's out. If, if the fire intensifies, we ask that you call 911 immediately and the fire department will respond. But put a lid on it, generally turning off the burner, putting a lid on it and sliding that pan off of the, the hot burner will be enough to take care of the, the issue. And last but not least, don't cook if you are drowsy um, from taking any medication, drinking or consuming any alcohol, or just not getting enough sleep the previous night before. If you don't feel like you can stay awake during the entire cooking process, it's best not to do the cooking. Now, in the event that your clothing were to catch fire, we want to stress, like we do when we go into the schools, the stop, drop, and roll technique. Uh, one little piece was added to the stop, drop, and roll, that is cover. So you're going to stop what you're doing, no running, no walking, cover your face, drop to the floor, and roll consistently over and over until that fire is put out. Afterwards, make sure you or somebody else calls 911 immediately to get medical help. And small burns can be put under cold running water. Probably the best tool that we have in our arsenal to keep people safe at home are smoke alarms. So we want to make sure that our homes have working smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. We should test them regularly, once a month, have it tested. If you, if you need somebody to test it for you, call a friend or family member. But test those smoke detectors regularly to make sure they're working. Uh, we generally say when it comes to replacing batteries, when we change our clocks a couple times a year, we should also change the batteries in our smoke detectors. And in terms of placement of the smoke detectors, we really ask that you have a smoke detector in every single bedroom of the house, outside of any sleeping quarters, and on each level, basement, first floor, and second floor. It's really important to do a little bit of pre-planning. The smoke detectors are going to give you early warning if there is a fire that broke out in your house. However, we really need to have a couple of different ideas of how we're going to get out of our house in the event of a fire. Plan A might not always be the best option if the fire prevents you from accessing that front door. So please take a look at your house, come up with a couple of ideas of, or a couple of paths of how you would get out in the event of a fire. Could be the front door, could be a back door, could be a window on the first floor if that is accessible. Um, in order for that to work though, really make sure, open your windows regularly, make sure that they open easily and that you're able to open them. And in a fire situation, we stress that you get out of the house immediately and stay out. There is nothing inside of the house that is worth risking your life to go back in to get. Okay, once we're out, we're going to stay out. And last but not least, it's very important to make sure that any paths to exit doors remain free from clutter and windows are not blocked by materials so that in the event of a fire, you would be able to get out as easily as possible. And it also assists us as we are coming in to possibly make a rescue to be able to get in as quickly and safely as possible to give you aid and help you out. 
Okay, knowing your local emergency number. In the town of Clinton, 911 in, in the event of an emergency is the best way to reach a public safety dispatcher, report a fire or a medical emergency, and the public safety dispatchers will notify us at the fire department. Okay, 911 is the quickest, most direct way to get a hold of us in the event of an emergency. <clears throat> However, if you have other questions in regards to smoke detectors or really anything else for the fire department, you can call our business line, which is 978-365-4111. That will put you in touch with a public safety dispatcher who will then relay your call down to the fire department. In the event of a house fire, once you've gotten out of the house, you can think about making the call at that point, whether from a cell phone or a neighbor's phone. Never call 911 from inside of your house if you've noticed a fire has begun. Get out and stay out. Okay, last but not least, pertinent to seniors. Try to plan your route out of your house based upon your known abilities. If you know it might take a little longer, have multiple options and multiple routes out of the house. Keep any local emergency numbers near your bed. Have a telephone in your bedroom, whether it be a cell phone charging on a nightstand within arm's reach or, house or landline house phone on your nightstand so you can pick it up and make necessary calls in the event of an emergency. And any other necessary items that you might need to help you get out of the house, whether it be your glasses, etc., should be within arm's reach <coughs> at all times. Okay, so just to recap, we want to make sure, in particular, smoking, cooking, and situations with space heaters and home heating that we really, really, really pay particular attention to. Smoking, try to keep it outside of the house. And if in the house, wet those cigarette butts and use a deep, sturdy ashtray. Cooking, we want to always be in the room while we're cooking, not wear any loose-fitting materials. <clears throat> and if there is a fire that were to start in a pan, we want to slide a lid on it and turn the burner off and call 911. And last but not least, when it comes to home heating, if you're going to use those space heaters, plug them directly into a wall outlet. Do not use power strips and extension cords. And give three feet in any direction around that space heater from any material that could be flammable and keep them on a, on a flat, hard surface like a hardwood floor or tile floor versus carpet. For anybody with further questions in regards to smoke detectors for their house, if you have any questions in regards to acquiring, acquiring smoke detectors, you can call the Clinton Fire Department and we can work with you to try to uh, get some smoke detectors for you and get those up in your house for seniors. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. And you're welcome, welcome any calls or questions that you may have with anything further uh, to reach out to me at the Clinton Fire Department. I'm on group two and would be more than happy to answer any calls. Uh, we're going to have Melissa coming in with community outreach next and she's going to talk to you about fuel assistance and a variety of other topics. Thank you for your time. Have a safe, happy holidays and a nice winter. Hi everyone. I'm Melissa Sargent, your outreach coordinator here at the Clinton Council on Aging. I am going to go over some programs that we have here to assist our local seniors. Um, one of them to piggyback on firefighter Lemansky um, is fuel assistance. So if you're having trouble paying those heating bills, um, we do have some help here and I can help you fill out those applications. Um, it is income based and they will take into consideration um, some of your expenses as well. Um, then we also have our SNAP program that is for food insecurities and that will be a debit card um, that they will give to you. You can use it at all your grocery stores. I do also have the forms for that and can help you. Um, that is also income based. They do not take into consideration expenses. Um, so there's different, different guidelines and different levels on different programs. Um, we also have housing that I can help you fill out that paperwork. Um, 
that would be an application um, just to let you guys know there is a two and a half to three year at least wait list um, so if you're thinking in the future that you might need some senior housing i would definitely get in um, here and schedule an appointment or call me for an appointment and we can get that application at least submitted um, and then we also have um, some insurance so if you have insurance questions if you're not sure if the plan is still right for you if you're getting ready to retire if your spouse is getting ready to retire and that's going to change your health benefits um, we do have a group that comes in integrity medicare advisors and then we also have the shine program so those are two options for you to discuss your insurance needs um, all of them get booked through myself so i keep the schedules for everybody um, that is about it for now um, if you have any questions you can call me um, at the clinton council on aging thanks guys